Hey everybody, in this short video I want to demonstrate to you how to create these three different nav bar styles. You see I have three of them on the on the screen here. Uh, in the first one we have, uh, you can see, a small rollover a response when I put my mouse over each link and the hover state. In bar style 2, I've changed it up a little bit, made each link have its own shape, uh, also with a hover effect on that. And then last but not least, we have this third bar down below, uh, again styled slightly differently and with a different hover behavior on that. Uh, in addition to showing you how to style each of these three nav bars, I also want to show you how to um, target different nav bars within the same page using class uh, designations. So we'll talk about how you can use class to style different parts of the same page. This entire tutorial, everything you see here is done completely in HTML5 with CSS and there's no JavaScript involved. Okay, let's get going. To get started, you need your basic HTML page. I've gone ahead and just started out with that here. Uh, so if you don't have that, go ahead and stop the video right now and go ahead and create this. Uh, all we have is your basic uh, doc type, HTML tags, uh, beginning and end. We have the head tag here at the beginning with a simple title uh, and a meta tag. Uh, inside the body, we have an H1, simply states navigation bar style one, and a nav tag. Inside that is our nav bar. Of course, uh, we always do navigation links inside an unordered list tag, a UL. And of course, inside a UL, you need a bunch of LIs. So we have five LIs here. And inside each of those, there is an, an anchor tag or a link. Uh, currently, they're just linking a dummy link, a link that goes nowhere, has the hashtag or pound symbol inside the quotes. Uh, so that means the link will work as a link, but doesn't really go anywhere. This is just for testing purposes. Right now, this particular page will look like this in a browser. I'm using Chrome as my testing browser and all the CSS I write will be specifically targeted to a Chrome browser. All right, so what are we gonna do to start styling this? Let's uh, start with our uh, up in our head area. We need to add, of course, our style tag. Now, some of you may prefer to uh, write your styles in a separate file. Typically that's recommended, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it here for simplicity's sake. The first thing we're gonna do is style the body. We just wanna um, take away uh, any margin or padding from the entire document. This is commonly done. So I'm gonna set margin and padding to zero. Next, I wanna go ahead and give some styles just to the nav element in the HTML. And so I'm going to, as my selector, put nav. Inside there, I'm going to set the background color to what I call a dim gray. I'm going to be using uh, names, color names, instead of hexadecimal color codes. And so uh, you can use whatever you want. You can use hex codes, you can use RGB colors. I'm just going to use names in this tutorial. This is what we have so far. Uh, I've gone ahead and put uh, the nav, which we see is a block level element, so it goes all the way across the page, and that's been given a background color. Next, we wanna set the color of the uh, text inside that nav to uh, white. Do a text align to center, and set some padding all the way around the edges of the nav element to five. Now we see what's happened here. The text align has set just the text, but not the bullets to the center of the screen. We're gonna take care of those bullets in a second. And let's put a little bit of padding um, all around this. We can only really see it though at the top and bottom. You might also be wondering why the text isn't white. Um, we see that the bullets are white, but the text is not. And that's just because the browser has some built-in styles built into it. And um, they're called agent styles and those automatically make all links blue and underlined, and so that's why we see what we see here. I don't really like the look of this font. It's the default Times New Roman style font, so let's go change the font family. Over here, we'll do it inside the body tag so it affects the entire document. Font family, let's just set it to Arial. And we see this now, we see the change it's made, okay. I think what I'll do next here is just resize this window, put it alongside my editor so I can see things as they update. The next thing we want to do is get rid of those bullet points that are off to the left side. Now that's part of the 
unordered list itself. So let's target inside the nav the UL. And we'll go ahead and set the list style type to none. And when we do that, now we see over here, those bullets have gone away. Next, what we want to do is start to style the individual LIs. That's the individual elements in the list. And uh, the way we can cause each of these links to line up across the page like a horizontal nav bar is to simply use, let's go nav UL LI, uh, simply use the display property and set it to inline block. Inline block treats each element, each LI, as an inline element, which means it lines up in a line. Um, and that, but yet things outside of the UL of the LI are still considered a block level element. So they're inline inside a block. In addition to that, let's go ahead and just set a little padding. I want five pixels on the top and the bottom. And I want a little bit more, how about 20 pixels on the left and right. So this is what we have here in the look. We have the uh, links all separated a little bit by the padding, but I don't like the blue color or the underline. We want to change that next. So we will target and the anchor inside the nav. So nav space A. And what we want to do is set text decoration to none. You'll see the underline will go away. And color, let's set it to black. Finally, what we want to do is give it a slight hover effect so that when I move my mouse over each one of these links, they change their, their appearance a little bit. So we will target the anchor inside the nav, but we're going to give it a pseudo selector by putting a colon hover. And only when it's hovered over with the mouse, now the color will change. And that's all you have to do to give it this effect. When the mouse is over it, it changes color. Very cool. Okay, that's our first navigation bar style. We want to go ahead and add another navigation bar and target it with a class name and then give it some other styles. So we'll come on down to our HTML here and copy everything from the H1 through the nav, pasting it down below, change it to nav bar style 2 in the H1. And in order to successfully target a different nav bar with a different style, we need to give it a class name. So inside the nav tag, let's give it a class equals quote bar two. And we'll see now how we can target a different part of the page and make it look differently. As you can see right now, all the same styles from nav bar one are still being applied to nav bar two, nav bar two because uh, this second navbar has all the same elements as the top one. It has a nav tag, an unordered list, LIs and As, and so these other styles will apply. They will affect both of them. But we want to change parts of it uh, through styling using the class name. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a comment here, bar two styles, just so we can see the difference. Now to style the second nav bar, I'm still going to use a nav selector, but I'm going to put a dot bar two. And you can see uh, that's a class name available to me. And again, all the previous styles will still be applied. Um, so I only need to target and style things that are different in the second nav bar from the first nav bar. So what we'll do is uh, change the background color, setting that to black. So once we save this and update the page in the browser, we can see now that the nav bar, the entire nav area, is got a background in black, which makes it our links um, buttons a little hard to see. So let's fix that. Let's uh, style each of the LIs that are part of this uh, nav. Nav dot bar two. Again, we have to target this particular one. We want to style the LIs, which are in the ULs. Let's give the background color of each individual LI a certain color. I'm going to give it dark cyan. And if I save that, you can see now, you can see each individual LI has its own shape. How about a little border? One pixel solid white. 
And I like to often give it a little border radius, which is a round corner of five pixels. I think that looks nice. Now, as you saw in my previous example, instead of setting this entire uh, UL here um, in the center of the nav bar area, we can also align it to the right. So let's go back up into our nav bar and do a text align and set that to center. Sorry, and set that to right. It, bo it bounces over to the right side of the nav bar area. And then finally, and just uh, we still have the previous hover effect from the first nav bar still being applied here, but I'd like to have a slightly different color. So in order to make it different than the previous styles, let's go ahead and target our bar to class nav. We're targeting the anchor tag, the hover state. And let's set the color to a light cyan. And now when we saw it, save that and go over and test it, it doesn't look terribly different, but that's a slightly different color there for the text. All right, uh, we've seen now how we can really change the style of a nav bar just with a few uh, new styles that are being applied uh, using a class on the nav bar that's giving it a different look. And again, I only have to override the particular styles that I want to be different in this second nav bar from the first. Let's do a third one. Once again, I'll need to come down here and uh, copy the H1 through the nav, paste that in, and let's give it a different name. Let's say bar three. As soon as I do that, we see that the styles in bar three revert back to the original styles, because again, all of these styles in bar style two are no longer applied here because it doesn't have that class name. It has a different class name, bar three. We'll go up and do the same thing. In this particular one, uh, let's again style bar three. What I'd like to do is uh, make the entire nav bar uh, not span across the entire page. So I'm going to give it a width of 60%. Using a percentage will cause it to adjust to the page, uh, depending on how big or small the page is, uh, taking up only 60% of the window. Background color, let's give it a little brighter color here, just for fun. Also, a border. How about two pixel solid gray? And I like a little drop shadow. The way we do that is with the box shadow property. It's five pixel shade to the right, five pixel down. 5 pixel blur and a color. Gray works well. And again, a little bit of a rounded edge to that. We can go ahead and set border radius to 10 pixels. Now, in order to get this to be centered on the page, uh, what we're going to do is use a margin colon 0 for the top and bottom margin. And then auto will set the whole element of the nav uh, bar to be centered or auto-aligned auto uh, for the margins right and left. Now we're done styling the entire nav element. Let's style the individual uh, LIs for the different links inside of that. Again, we need to style nav.bar3 to target this third one, but we want to style the LIs inside of that. We want to, I want to separate each of those links with a line, a vertical line in between them. Uh, one easy way to do that is to set the border right uh, to something like one pixel solid gray. And watch what happens when we do that. It goes ahead and puts a line there inside each one. Now the thing is, if I make this page a little bit bigger here, we can see that I have a line in between each one, but there's also one out here on the far right, which I don't really want that. I only want the lines in between. So how will we fix that? There's a, another property called last child, which you can set. And that would mean the final 
ally in this list of allies would not have a border to the right. Here's how you do it. Use colon after the ally last dash child. And doing what we did earlier, border right, border dash right colon, say none. And if we save that, now we'll see here uh, after link five, um, there is no border to the right. That looks nice. Finally, we want to add some hover styles to these individual links, as we've done before. We will target the anchor hover state, changing the color to a light coral. And I'm actually going to add the underline back in, underline. And if we take a look at that now, when we hover over any one of the links, it will change color and an underline will be added to it, which gives it the sense of being a link. Finally, in the example you saw that when I put my mouse or hovered over uh, one of these links, it actually caused the link to move down a little bit. That is what's called a transform property. Again, targeting the entire LI, we can set a hover effect to that. And what we want to do is use the trans, transform property, the specifically the translate event, and we have to give it two values. It's going to change the X and Y position of the element. We don't want to move it on the X axis, so we'll put a zero and a comma, and then we'll go ahead and move it down by five pixels. Save that, and once we look, now when we hover over these, they move down a little bit, about five pixels down. Okay, that's a real quick illustration of how to style nav bars in three different ways, uh, teaching you a number of different CSS properties that you can use throughout your pages, and also specifically how to target different parts of the page with a class name so that you can apply slightly different styles to different parts of the page, in this case, three different nav bars. Hope this has been helpful. If you've liked the video, go ahead and like it and subscribe to my channel. See you soon.